Hello, I am Dr. Ajay Sharma, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, James Engineering Management Technical Campus, Greater Noda. The subject that I teach in this semester is digital communication. This subject is for BTEC, fifth semester, electronics and communication engineering students. The topic that I discuss in this video lecture is design and property of matched filter. You know, a mesh filter is one of the important or most useful or most usable filter in digital communication because this filter gives maximum signal to noise ratio, right? So that's why uh, we use this mesh filter. So mesh filter has its importance in digital communication you know and uh, as far as the receiver is concerned so matched filter based receivers are used nowadays because of its results it gives exact replica of the of the signal that is to be transmitted from transmitter so the output is exact matched to the output of a transmitter. That's why we call it as a matched filter, right? So, so a matched filter has a transfer function of HF. HF in frequency domain and ST in time domain. And we also familiar with that uh, that when we send a signal in digital communication, actually we send a pulse, right? These pulse have a certain voltage levels and these voltage levels represent one or zero, right? So in this mesh filter, what we assume, we assume that we have a ST. ST designate as a signal pulse. This ST is to be transmitted from a transmitter, right? So when this pulse is transmitted from transmitter, then this pulse is to be reached at the receiver via a channel. And we are already familiar with that channel introduce a noise or a Gaussian noise or you may say white Gaussian noise and that is represented by NT. This is NT. And the nature of this white Gaussian noise is additive. Means this NT is added into ST. Then overall pulse is represented by RT. So the RT is a signal or a pulse that is reached at the receiver after traveling a certain distance through a channel. Right, so RT is the pulse that is reached at the input of the match filter or match receiver, and this RT have a signal power as well as noise power. Right, and this is the output RT represent input, R naught represent output. Similarly, ST represent input, S naught T represent output, and T represent input and n not t represent output right so the input signal is denoted by st and the output signal is denoted by s not t and similar notation for noise is also used that is nt is the input noise and uh, output noise is designated as n not t Now this filter can be applied to digital signaling and radar problems. There are various, you know, uh, use, there are various 
or there are the use of this mesh filter in various various places in electronics and communication engineering it also used in radar systems using a digital signaling digital communication right the signal is assumed to be a time limited to the interval 0 t so what we assume here we assume a signal when we say signal actually we say pulse right signal and pulse have the same meaning so signal have a time interval of 0 to t or you may say pulse have the time interval of 0 to t so when the signal is assumed a time limited to the interval 0 to t and is zero otherwise then as far as the noise is concerned we always take a power spectral density of noise power spectral density of noise pnf so this power spectral density pnf is always a function of you know f right so this power spectral density of noise represent a noise here pnf of the additive input noise nt is also known right so this is the nt this is the input noise and this is the power spectral density of noise pnf right so we wish to determine the filter characteristics such that the instantaneous output signal power is maximized at the sampling time t not compared with the average output noise power so what actually we want in filter we want we want to mag maximize the signal to noise ratio this is only be possible when you have you know you have more signal power as compared to noise power right so that is so this is uh, this is the, this particular expression if you see this expression this is signal to noise out zahir si baat hai signal to noise out you need output signal power to the output noise power s not t is the output signal and if you square this signal actually s not t is a amplitude or you may say a voltage and if you square the voltage it become a power normalized power if you take r is equals to 1 right so s not is s not square t is always designated as a signal power and for noise signal noise is also a signal right so n not t represent the amplitude of the signal or you may say n not t represent voltage of the signal and if you square the voltage it become power and this time noise power because you square n not t so as far signal to noise ratio is concerned in mesh filter it is always the ratio of s not s not square t upon n not square t right and what we have to we have to maximize this s by n out and this s by n is maximum at the time at the time when the time period of the pulse will start from t1 and if the pulse finish at t2 so at the moment of t2 when the when the whole pulse is to be is to be attain a certain p at that time this s by n output is maximum so this is the mesh filter design criteria we have to maximize this s by n out not only that we have also s by n in also you know because at input we have, again we have a s t and n t so if you square s t and n t then this gives you s by n input but what we focus we focus on s by n out this is much more important for us because on the basis of this s by n out receiver takes a decision decision either one is received or zero is received and receiver is able to read correctly if you maximize s by n ratio so the mesh filter does not preserve the input signal wave shape as that is not its objective rather the objective is to distort the input signal wave shape and filter the noise so at the sampling time t not so output signal level will be large as possible with respect to root mean square noise level we always take a rms value because noise is a random you know noise is very much random in nature is it it's considered to be a random variable so we always take a root mean square value of that right 
so the mesh filter is a linear filter that maximize s by n out and which is equals to s not square t not n square t and this is the transfer function of the mesh filter look at this hf hf is the transfer function in frequency domain this is equal to k constant sf upon pnf this sf is the transfer function of st right so if you take the transfer function of st it become sf and pnf again this is a power spectral density again it is a function of f e to the power j omega t naught t naught is the sampling time period of a pulse so this expression is very much important now now again this is the same uh, mathematical model that we seen in previous slide so where sf is the fourier transform of the st we already discussed that what is sf it is the fourier transform of the known input signal st of duration t second and what is pnf is a power spectral density of noise right so and uh, you know and k is any uh, real non zero constant so this is the this is the model that we start this mesh filter with this particular thing we have rt is equals to st plus nt we already discussed that then output r not t is equals to s not t n not t at the output and these are the transport function of the mesh filter right now uh, now if you move uh, further if you want to analyze this mesh filter now what we know already is that in mesh filter the power spectral density is n not by t this is n not by t right so what is the power spectral density in uh, density in the mesh filter it is n not by t for wide gaussian noise it is fixed right so if in an in analysis we all know that the noise that we deal in communication digital communication is wide gaussian noise and wide gaussian noise always have a power spectral density of n not by 2 so what you have to do you have to put this pnf in previous uh, in this expression in this expression so what do you get what do you get you get this so what you do you just put power spectral density pnf is equal to n not by t you get this particular expression again we solve a very you know this particular problem theorem when the input noise is wide the impulse response of a mesh filter becomes this much where c is a arbitrary real positive constant t not is the time of the peak signal output and st is the known input signal wave shape so we start with the proof what we have we have st is st it's a uh, st and if you take if you take the fourier transform of that it become actually st is the fourier inverse of hf right and that you already know 2k i not minus infinity to infinity sf sf is the fourier transform of st e e to the power j omega t not e j omega t dr this is the standard formula uh, this is the standard formula this is the standard mathematical expression the student i think already familiar with this formula you know when you transform the things so 2 can uh, this 2 can not remain the same now what you have to do you have to solve this expression e to power this and e to power j omega t if you take e comma this should be this is this, this should be add if you you add this and omega is 2 pi f right omega is 2 pi f so what do you you break omega 2 pi f take e comma so this plus this and take 2 pi f comma it become t not minus t t f right so if you solve this expression you get this and again you get this expression this is the expression as t not t right so if you take the fourier time uh, transform of as t not t this become this right so actually this is the uh, so this actually as t not minus t is equal to this much this much expression this which is in bracket of that this is 
is a standard formula. And what is 2k n naught? Again, it is a custom constant. So replace 2k n naught by c. So you get the same. You get the same expression that you want to prove. St is equal to c st naught k. And again, you get the same. So what uh, we seen in previous example, we just take the case of impulse response. So that shows the impulse response of the mesh filter, and we always take a white noise because white noise come in the picture whenever you take a uh, channel noise. So shows impulse the response of a mesh filter, which is a white noise case, is simply the simply the known signal wave shape that is played backward and translate by an amount t naught. So that is the reason why we call this filter to be as a mass to mass to the signal, right? So an an important property is actually the value of S by. So when you analyze this mass filter, the important parameter that you do want to see is S by n ratio, and this S by n ratio output. Then we again use a Parseval theorem. Actually, Parseval theorem is very important. It gives the idea of energy and power. Not only that. The Pascal theorem says that energy or power in time domain is equal to the energy and power in frequency domain, right? And same in the case of S by n ratio. We look at the S by n ratio. So S by n ratio in frequency domain is equal to in time domain. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. So that that expression come from a Pascal theorem. This is a very important theorem. If you go through the books, if you if you want to complete if you want to you know solve the complete analysis of mass filter you always use this possible theorem look at this possible theorem look at the expressions look and not only that you again solve that expression what is this s square t dt minus n by t that's the expression actually represent energy if you have a signal x t, then its energy is x square t minus n by t if you integrate that. So again, if this is this expression shows the energy of s t, so you can replace this particular expression as e, right? E, e is the energy or energy in the input signal. So final expression, this is very important. S by n ratio at the output of a mesh filter is 2 e upon n naught. E represent energy of a energy of a Signal and and not represent the noise of a, or you must say white Gaussian noise. Right. So this is very interesting result. It states that what this states that S by n out depends on the signal energy and power spectral density of the noise and not on the particular signal wave shape that is used. So S by n totally depends upon the two factor. What is the energy? That contain in the pulse and what is the noise content, rather than its shape. So, if the shape is to be damaged at the receiver, there is no effect at the result, right, of the result. So, of course, the signal energy can be increased to improve S by n. So, if you improve S by n by increasing the, there is two ways. Either you increase the signal amplitude or signal duration or both. So uh thank you very much